Hey there, welcome. In today's lesson, you and I are going to do a full reading test from Preptical.com. So throughout the test, I'm going to be here to give you some tips, some strategies, and also to give you the answers. Now, before we actually start the reading test, it's important to look at some overall strategies. So first of all, I would recommend that you always read the questions first. When we read, we always have a purpose for reading. So by reading the questions before we start looking at the text in the passages, we're giving ourselves a purpose. We're going to know whether we need to skim read or scan the information or whether to read for detail. So read the question first and identify what question type you're being asked. While we're doing that, underlying keywords in the question that help you to understand what it is that the question is asking you to do. Now, after we've done that, we move on to stage two. And in stage two, we need to read the text very quickly. This is called skimming. And when we do this, we want to be getting a mental idea of what information is in each paragraph and what is the overall layout of the text. This is going to help us when it comes to answering all of the questions. Okay, once we've done these two steps, we go on to answering each question individually. And we're going to do that in a second. The last thing I'd like to point out is we need to learn how to do this quickly. One of the most difficult things about the IELTS reading test is finishing on time. You have one hour and there are 40 questions. It's a race against the clock. Now, many students that do very well in the IELTS reading test say that they allocate their time like this. They spend 15 minutes on section one, 20 minutes on section two, and 25 minutes on section three. And that's because section one is considered to be the easiest, so passage one, and section three is considered to be the most difficult. Okay, with that in mind, let's begin. Like I mentioned before, the first thing we're going to do is look at the different question types. Okay, so in questions one to seven, we have a matching question. And in questions eight to 13, we have a sentence completion question. So what I would recommend to you is look first at the matching question and underlying keywords that help you understand the question even before you read the text. You're also going to do the same with the sentence completion task. Now, you can do this by um, downloading the PDF below this lesson, or you can continue watching and we're going to do it together. Anyway, once that's done, we're going to turn to the text. And like I mentioned, the first thing we do before we start to try and answer the questions is to read the passage quickly and pay attention to what is in each paragraph. So if you want, you can pause the video and take just a short period of time and read this passage as quickly as you can, paying attention to what is in each paragraph. Right, okay. You can either pause the video or you can download the PDF below this lesson. Let's complete it together. So we've got our two question types. We're going to first look at questions one to seven, which is the matching question. So what is our strategy? Well, first of all, we need to scan the text for the names. So the names are these. We've got Ernest Adams, Riley Morgan, Mila Martin, etc. So the first thing we do is scan the text for the names. Let's do that together. Again, you can pause the video or you can look at the PDF, quickly scan the text for the names. Let's do that together now. Okay, here we see Nicole Clark. Great. Are there any other names? Okay, well, here's Ernest Adams. Here's Stefan Fletcher and Mila Martin. What else is there? We've also got Daisy Richards over here. Here's Riley Morgan. And here's Stella Walker. 
Okay, so we've scanned the text for all the names and that means we know which section we're going to read in detail to find the answer. Okay, what's the second stage? Well, the next thing is we locate the answer and read for detail. Okay, so first of all, we're going to look at Nicole Clark because she is at the beginning. So I would recommend that you do this in the order that the names appear in the text. The reason for that is it's going to help you to get a better understanding of how this passage is organized. Okay, let's take our text about Nicole Clark and find the answer. Okay, take a second, pause the video if you want, read through this text and see if you can work out what the answer is. I'll be here when you finish. Right, so we're looking at Nicole Clark and what I'd like you to do is to look at the different options and decide whether or not they are the correct answer. So number one, meditation can help people get a better night's sleep. No, it doesn't mention anything about sleep. Number two, further research is needed to verify the efficacy of meditation. Hmm. It doesn't mention anything about research or efficacy. Number three. Okay. Meditation may have been discovered by chance. Have a look at this section here. Societies may have unknowingly come upon meditation and experience an altered state of mind while staring at their fires. Okay. So the answer is this one, meditation may have been discovered by chance. Okay, it says may have unknowingly, so unknowingly and by chance are synonyms, come upon meditation and experience an altered state of mind while staring at, fire, at their fires. Okay, so we've got our answer for Nicole Clark. Let's go back to the text and now we're going to look at Ernest Adams, which is the next name in the text. So let's take our text about Ernest Adams. Again, pause the video and see if you can choose which is the correct name for the statement. Okay, what about number one? Meditation can help people get a better night's sleep. It doesn't mention anything about sleep. Number two, further research is needed to verify the efficacy of meditation. Nope. Number three, we know it's not number three because number three is Nicole Clark. Number four, properly conducted meditation can contribute to better health. Interesting. It's not that one. Number five, meditation has many different forms around the world. Hmm. Have a look at this last sentence here. It says, countries and cultures adopted different forms of meditation and created their own unique way of practicing it. So that's the answer. So number five, meditation has many different forms around the world, is Ernest Adams. Next, we're going to go to the next name, which is Stephen Fletcher or Stefan Fletcher. Okay, let's take the text and again, try and work out which is the correct option for Stefan Fletcher. Pause the video or look at the text from the PDF download and see if you can identify the answer. And then we'll look at it together. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to look at it yourself. The answer in this case is number one, meditation can help people get a better night's sleep. Now, how do we know that? Well, if we look over here, it says meditation helped me fight insomnia. So insomnia is the state of not being able to sleep. But if Stephen Fletcher meditates, it helps him fight insomnia. So it helps him to sleep. Great. Next, we have Mila Martin. So let's take that text and find the answer. Again, pause the video and see if you can find the answer yourself. Okay, in this case, the answer is number four. Properly conducted meditation can contribute to better health. Now, how do we know this? Well, it says here, 
well-performed meditation can improve different neurological mechanisms in the human body that are linked with mental and physical well-being. So we've got well-performed meditation is a synonym for properly conducted meditation and then we've got um, improve different neurological mechanisms in the body that are linked with mental and physical well-being. And that's paraphrasing the idea that meditation can contribute to better health. I hope you got that one right. Let's continue. Okay, next we have Daisy Richards. So let's take Daisy Richards. Here's the text. See if you can find out which is the correct option. Again, pause the video and have a go yourself. When you're ready, hit play and we'll go through the answers together. Okay, let's go through the answers. The, the answer is number seven. <clears throat> Without meditation, busy lifestyle may lead to permanent stress. Now, how do we know that? Well, have a look at the last sentence. People should be able to cope with the unnecessary stresses with the help of meditation, especially if these stresses are beyond their control. Otherwise, they would end up with chronic stress. So chronic stress is a synonym of permanent stress. So that helps us to find the answer. And then we're talking about how without meditation, people would have that chronic stress. So we know that the answer for Daisy Richards is seven. Without meditation, busy lifestyle may lead to permanent stress or chronic stress. Basically, the reading test is often a vocabulary test. You need to know that words mean other words, or you need to be able to identify paraphrasing. This is a perfect example. If you don't know what chronic stress is, you might find it difficult to identify that the answer is number seven, because chronic stress and permanent stress are synonyms in this context. Let's continue. So next we've got the information for Riley Morgan. So what does it say about Riley Morgan? Take a second, find the answer, and then hit play, and we'll, find, we'll look at the answers together. In this case, the answer is number two. Further research is needed to verify the efficacy of meditation. And we know that from the last sentence. It says, however, to validate our short-term findings, future studies should focus on the long-term effects of meditation on hypertension and stress. So we need more um, studies to focus on the efficacy of meditation. That was a bit more tricky, that one. Okay, now the final one we have is Stella Walker. So let's take that text and see if you can find out the answer. Now there's only one option left, so hopefully you should get that right. It is indeed number six. Meditation has increased school attendance. Have a look at the last part of this text and reduction in absenteeism. So absenteeism is the noun form of to be absent. So when students are not in school, they are absent. This is absenteeism. So this is related to school attendance. Do you see the way that having a vast vocabulary is very important for the reading test? If you don't know what absenteeism is, it's much more difficult to get the answer for question six. Okay, let's move on now to the sentence completion. So we're going to look at questions eight to 13. What is our strategy? Now, the first thing we need to do is to check how many words you need to write. And you can find that here. It says, write no more than one word and or a number. Okay, what exactly is one word or one number? That's a difficult question and a lot of people um, need to know this in order to do well in the IELTS reading test and listening test. So hyphenated words count as one word. So for example, full-time or mother-in-law, these are both counted as one word. What about these? Numbers with symbols are counted as one number. So for example, 7am, one number, 
20th, or it's 20%, one number, 19th, one number, $20.10, one number. Okay, finally, compound nouns are also considered to be one word. So, bedroom, boyfriend, these are two words put together and they count as one word. Okay, so we've checked how many words we need to write. The next thing to know is that the answers come in order. This is very important because it's going to help us to find the answers. Now, what we're going to do is to underline the key words in the sentence that help us to understand what it is we're looking for. So let's do this with number eight. Meditation became common in the West only in the something. Okay, so meditation became common in the West. Okay, so we've got common and West as key words that are going to help us to look through the text, to scan the text or skim the text and find the answer. The final thing we're going to do is to think about what kind of word it is that we're looking for in the text. So in this case, meditation became common in the West only in the... Okay, well, we need a date, something like only in the 11th century, for example. Okay, with that in mind, let's skim the passage and look for the answer. Now, again, pause the video and see if you can find the answer. If you're feeling lazy, don't worry, I'm going to find it for you. It's over here. You see the sentence that starts with in the West, so in one of our key words. Let's see if we can find out the answer. In the West, however, meditation was first practiced in the 17th century. Okay, so we've got a date here. However, look at the next part. Still, it didn't gain popularity until the 20th century. So the answer isn't 17th century, it's late 20th century. But wait, late 20th century is three words and our instructions tell us no more than one word and or a number. So what are we going to write? Are we going to write late 20th century or 20th century or 20th century with a number and a word? Read the instructions. Which one are we going to choose? We're going to choose the third. We're going to have 20th century, number and a word. Very important. Don't lose marks because you didn't read the instructions carefully. Always read the instructions. Okay, let's now look at the second. So question number nine. We're going to look at the key words to help us to understand what it is we're looking for. Our evolutionary, sorry, our evolutionary something is the underlying reason for the stress that we have in our daily lives. Okay, evolutionary something. We need something that collocates with evolutionary. Let's see if we can find it. Again, you can pause the video, skim read this, and try and find the answer. Again, if you're feeling lazy, I'll show you. It's just over here. So let's take this text and find the answer for ourselves. Okay, pause the video and see what one word or, or and a number fits into this space to make a grammatically correct sentence. Here's a clue. The answer is here. Okay, the answer is adaptation. Our evolutionary adaptation is the underlying reason for the stress that we have in our daily lives. Okay, so in the text it says, human adaptation over time as a result of evolution is to blame. And, with, and in the question it says, is the underlying reason. So is to blame is a kind of informal way of saying that something is the reason. A tricky question, that one. Let's move on. So we're now going to look at question 10. And the first thing again we're going to do is to underline keywords that help us understand what it is we're looking for. So college students who were placed in the something group, so hmm, we're looking for a collocation with group, were not 
enrolled in the five-step course. So again, five-step course is something useful to find. And we're looking for a collocation with group. Let's have a look at the text. Again, take a second, skim read, find the answer, and then hit play when you found it. The answer is here. Let's have a look at the text. Okay, take a second, hit pause, find the answer. Remember, choose one word and or a number to make a grammatically correct sentence. The answer is around here. Now, this is a particularly tricky one. So if you haven't found the answer yet, see if you can use my clues to find which group it is. In this case, it is the control group, and I'll explain why. Um, this text talks about a meditation group and a control group and also a high-risk subgroup. The thing is, this high-risk subgroup contain people from the meditation group and the control group. Now, it says at the very bottom, it says the meditation group was enrolled in a five-step meditation course. Now, we're looking for the group that was not in the five-step meditation group. So it's got to be the control group. It's the only group left because that people are either in the meditation group or they're in the control group and the high-risk subgroup contain people from either group. So if it's all the people from the meditation group that do this five-step meditation course, then it's the control group that doesn't do the five-step meditation group. So it's meditation course. That one was a tricky one, so don't worry if you got it wrong. Let's move on to number 11. Okay, keywords. The study of the effects of meditation on college students ran for something. Okay, ran for, we're looking for a time period here. See if you can find the answer. Remember, the answers come in order, so we're really only looking at the final part of the passage. Now, the answer, in fact, is here. It's just below um, the previous answer. So don't feel like the answers are equally spaced out throughout the text. You might have one answer on one line, and then the next line below will have the next answer, and then maybe you'll have two paragraphs without an answer. They're not evenly distributed throughout the text. Let's see if we can find out the answer. So how long was the meditation uh, course run for? What's the answer? Pause the video and see if you can find out. The answer is here. It says procedure was repeated after three months when the study ended. So we know the answer is three months and we're going to write it as three and then months to comply with write no more than one word and a number. Remember, instructions are important. If you take anything away from this lesson, it's that instructions are important and you need to read them carefully. Number 12, <clears throat> the increased size of the something can imply continuous meditation practice. Okay, so we need to find something that can increase in size. Let's look at the text, see if you can find out what the answer is. So the answer is here. Let's take the text and see if we can extract the answer. So again, we're looking for something that can increase in size. The answer is here. They also develop a larger hippocampus. Now, it doesn't matter if you know or you don't know what a hippocampus is. This question is testing your ability to understand the words around the answer and to realize that this word hippocampus is the answer, even if we don't know what hippocampus means, which in my case, I didn't. Number 13. Okay. Meditation will be more frequently practiced as more supporting something 
becomes available. Okay, we're looking for a collocation with supporting. So supporting something. Look through the text and just the final two paragraphs now and see if you can find the answer. Hit pause and when you're ready, hit play and we'll look at the answers together. Okay, the answer is here at the very bottom of the text. With more clinical data in its favor, it is expected that meditation will become a widely recommended therapy in the future. So the answer is data. Meditation will be more frequently prescribed as more supporting data becomes available. So supporting data is a synonym for data in its favor which is what we find in the text. Right, next we're going to move on to passage two, so section two. Now, this one gets a little bit more difficult. Remember, before we start reading the text itself, we're going to look at the questions. So here are the three sets of questions we're going to be asked. We've got a matching headings question, We've got a list selection question, and we've also got a labeling question. So let's now look at the text. And what we're going to do again is to quickly read all of the text. This is called skimming, and we're going to um, get a mental idea of where information is in the text. So pause now and see if you can quickly read the text. When you're ready, hit play and we'll continue. Okay, so we're going to first of all focus on questions 14 to 20. So this is the matching headings question. What's our strategy? Okay, the first thing to notice is that, that there are more headings than paragraphs. So we've got 10 headings in total and we've only got seven paragraphs. So there's going to be three headings that we do not use. This is one of these kind of cheeky or irritating things that IELTS examiners do just to test you that little bit more. Next, we're going to read through all the headings and underlying keywords. So let's do that together. Here are the headings. Let's find out what are the keywords in each one. Okay. An extraction method explained. Importance of salt in battlegrounds, an innovation that transformed manufacturing, the first record, role of salt in revolutions, salt and supernatural beliefs, controversial salt policies throughout history, salt and food chemistry, contribution to the industry, Salt's historical importance. Okay, so we've underlined all the keywords. The next thing is, it's important that you know that the paragraphs are in order. So we're going to do paragraph A first, then B, then C, then D. So here is paragraph A, and let's look at it in a little bit more detail. So look at paragraph A and decide which of these headings is suitable for paragraph A. So imagine, for example, that you're the writer of this text. Which of these headings do you think you would choose for the reader to get a general idea of the content of this paragraph? Hmm. Okay, well, this paragraph, wait, pause now. If you haven't, we're gonna continue. So this paragraph is talking about the importance of salt in different places at different times in history. Okay, how do we know that? Well, here, there's lots about, um, you know, things like its discovery thousands of years ago, um, social, financial, mythology, and religious realm. So we're talking about um, the history of salt. So when we try and think about um, which heading we're going to use for paragraph A, we want to get a general understanding of what is in this paragraph. So with that in mind, which heading would you choose? Well, I would choose heading 10, 
Salt's historical importance because this paragraph is all about um, salt in history. So an uh, appropriate heading would be Salt's historical importance. Let's move on to paragraph B. Again, read through paragraph B and choose which of these headings would you put as a summation, as a summary of B. Okay, to help you, here are some um, of the words that I've highlighted that I think give you an indication of the answer. In this case, this paragraph is talking about the first time salt was described in literature. We're talking about when salt was described by a Chinese um, author and when he wrote a paper about that, about salt. So what would be an appropriate heading to choose? Again, look through the list and see what you would choose. Pause the video now. The answer is one, two, three, four. Question um, heading number four, which is the first record. So here we're talking about the first paper that was written about salt. So it is the first record. Next, paragraph C. Pause the video, choose the appropriate heading. When you've done that, hit play. We're going to go through the answers together. Okay, hopefully you've um, had a go yourself. Here are some clues to help you. In this case, the paragraph is talking about all the industrial uses of salt. So in that case, it's going to be number nine, contribution to the industry. Okay. Paragraph D, read the text, choose the heading, and when you're ready, hit play, and we'll go through the answer. Here's some text that help you identify the answer. In this case, the paragraph is talking about supernatural beliefs around salt. So we've got things like keep away the devil, or ruined by witches and evil spirits. And finally, at the end, this is supposed to blind the devil, which could be uh, standing behind, so standing behind you. In this case, the answer is six. Um, salt and supernatural beliefs, because we've got words like the devil, witches, and evil spirits. Okay, paragraph E. Pause the video, choose the heading, hit play. We're going to go through it together. Right, here's some text to help you. In this case, the paragraph is talking about the role of salt in various wars. So as a result, the answer must be two. The importance of salt in battlegrounds. So battlegrounds are places where wars are fought. Places that have battles. Battlegrounds. On to paragraph F. Here's some text that's going to help you. Pause the video, see if you can find the answer. Okay, hopefully you've tried it yourself. In this case, the paragraph is talking about various unfair policies around salt throughout history. So in this case, the answer is seven. Controversial salt policies throughout history. So we're talking about things like heavy salt taxes, um, governments or French kings controlling its production and sales, and also the fact that Mahatma Gandhi challenged British salt rules that completely controlled India's salt market. These are all contra controversial salt policies throughout history. G. Read the paragraph, choose the heading, hit play, we'll go through it together. Okay, here are some text to help you identify the answer. In this case, the paragraph is talking about how Bournemouth product, uh, produced salt. So the answer is uh, number one, an extraction method explained. So here we're talking about how the extraction method in Bournemouth works. Right, let's move on now to question 21 to 23. And this is a list selection question. So what's our strategy here? Number one, find out how many you have to choose. It's usually three. And yes, in this case, it is three. It says choose three letters 
A to G. Okay. Which of the following sentences below are accurate descriptions of present or past uses of salt based on passage two? Okay, so we're going to read through the list and underline keywords. So, A. Salt has been used in road construction. Hmm. Salt has been used to pay individuals for their work. Salt has been used in paper production. Salt is used in farming. Salt has been used to encourage soldiers during the war. Salt is added to water to make it clean. Salt is used in beer production. Okay, now this is a difficult one because only three of these are correct. The other ones um, are false. They don't appear uh, or they're not accurate descriptions of salt based on the past or the present. So what you're going to do is to skim read the text and try and find information that helps you decide whether or not this is a use of salt. So what I recommend is to try and focus on three at a time. So for example, I would look at A, B and C. Salt has been used in road construction, salt has been used to pay individuals for their work, and salt has been used in paper production. So I would focus on these three at the, at, at the beginning and then look for the piece of text that will tell us whether or not this is true. Okay, so here is our text and we're going to scan the passage for the first three list items. Okay, <clears throat> the first um, list item, salt has been used in road construction, can be found in paragraph A. Look at this part here. It says, salt roads were constructed in Europe, Asia and Africa by which salt was transported to regions where it was not produced. Okay, so salt has been used in road constructions, yes or no? The answer is no. The roads were not made with salt. The roads were made so that salt could be transported. So it's a subtle difference. The question is asking you, was salt used in the construction of roads? The answer is no. The salt, uh, the roads were made, for example, with concrete or um, with tarmac in order to transport salt. So it's a slightly different um, meaning. Next, we've got the, uh, whether or not B is true or false. So salt has been used to pay individuals for their work. Look at this text and choose Yes or no? Okay, it says Roman um, soldiers who worked for the Roman Empire were given a handful of salt as their payment for each day. So B, yes or no? The answer is yes. Roman soldiers were paid in salt. So for example, when they worked, instead of getting money or food, they were given salt. Okay, next, C. Salt has been used in paper production. Read the text and find out yes or no. Okay, this is the part that talks about paper. However, is it saying that salt was used to make paper? Well, no, it's not. When we're talking about paper here, we're talking about an academic paper. We're talking about literature. We're not saying that salt was used to make paper, we're saying that there was a paper, so literature, about salt. A subtle difference. Okay, Number, uh, letter D, salt is used in farming. Okay, read this part of the text and choose, is this a yes or is this a no? Okay, have a look at this one word, fertilizers. Now, we know that fertilizers are used in farming and it says it is also used in the manufacturing of thousands of other commodities such as glass, rubber and fertilizers. So if salt is used in fertilizers and fertilizers are used in farming, then yes, salt um, is therefore used in farming. So the answer is yes. Okay, so we've got two so far. We need to find three. Let's look at E. Now you'll find the answer in this text. Pause the video and choose yes or no. Okay. 
salt has been used to encourage soldiers during the war. Okay, well it says here, um, President Jefferson Davies decided to waive military service to those willing to provide the South Army with coastal salt kettles. Okay, the answer is no. Salt was not used. Salt was not used to encourage soldiers during the war. It was used to waive military services. So, for example, if you had salt, then you could give that to the government, and you didn't have to go to war. The government would waive. So it means、um, not include you in、um, military service. F. Read the text. Choose yes or no, and then hit play, and we'll go through it together. Okay, salt is added to water to make it clean. Well, it says here water softening systems. Now, is softening and making something clean the same? No, it's not. So F is no. Salt water, salt was used to soften water, but not to make it clean. Which means that G. Must be right. Let's check though, just to make sure. Salt has been used in beer production, and then the text says, in the past, salt was also added to beer during its manufacturing process in ancient Scotland. So, was it added to beer? Yes, it was. Salt was added to beer in Scotland. So, we've got our three correct answers: B, D, and G. Let's move on now to the labeling question. What's our strategy for a labeling question? It says fill in the blanks with、um, components of the production plant. Write no more than two words from the text for each answers. So it's important that we identify how many words we need to write, and that is here. Write no more than two words from the text for each answer. Now the next thing we need to do is make sure that we understand the graphic. So just look through the graphic and just make circles on it and draw on the question paper just to make sure that you fully understand the graphic even before you start reading the text. Now typically,、um, when we're labeling,、uh, we're doing a labeling question. All of the answers are in one paragraph, and we can find that in paragraph G. So take a second. And see if you can complete this labeling question. We'll look at the answers together in a second. Right. I hope I hope you've paused the video and looked through it to,、um, by yourself. Let's look through the answers together. Twenty-four is artificial lake, and we can see that in the text. Sea water was captured at high tide in an artificial lake, and we can see that. In the graphic on the left, the next one. Hmm, we've got some sort of pool here. Well, if we look below, we have shallow pond. It says wind and sun caused some water to evaporate before it was fed into a shallow pond, and we can see the lines in the diagram showing the evaporation of the water. So the answer is shallow pond. Two words. Remember. No more than two words, so two words is fine. Next, we have twenty-six, and we really need to look at the、um, graphic here. We've got some fires, and then on top of the fires, we've got these kind of strange shapes that go like this. What is the answer? Well, we can find that here. They are metal pans. So. Number twenty-six is metal pans. Two words, which is fine because it's no more than two words. Great. Okay, we're now moving on to passage three, the most difficult. And、um, just to make that extra difficult, we've got what most people consider to be the most difficult question type, which is the、um, yes, no, not given question type. So we've got question twenty-seven to thirty-three, thirty-four to thirty-seven, and thirty-eight to forty. So three different question types in passage three. So not only is passage three usually the most difficult, you often get quite a lot of questions to do with passage three. So make sure that you've 
done passage one and passage two quickly in order to give yourself enough time for passage three. So first of all, let's identify what are the question types. We've got a yes, no, not given. We've got a summary completion and we've got a match sentence endings question. Now, remember, we're going to look through the text and we're going to skim it, which means to read it quickly and pay attention to what is in each paragraph. Pause now and then when you've finished, we'll look at it together. Okay, so what is our strategy for yes, no, not given questions? Well, first of all, as always, we read the instructions. So we can find these here. Do the following sentences agree with the information given in the passage three? Choose yes if the statement agrees with the views of the writer. So if the statement agrees with the views of the writer, that's important. Choose no if the statement contradicts the view of the writer. So if something contradicts it, it means it does not agree with it. And choose not given if it is impossible to know what the writer's point of view is. Okay. Now remember, you're always going to find some that are yes, some that are no, and some that are not given. The same as true, false, and not given. Okay. Next, we're going to underline keywords in the sentence. So things like corporal punishment is effective in making a child compliant. It is difficult to compare the benefits and shortcomings of corporal punishment. Parents should discourage their children from questioning their authority. People usually don't realize the difference between um, discipline and punishment. Corporal punishment is not part of what is considered as discipline. Supporters of corporal punishment claim that it can alleviate parents' anger. Today's corporal punishment is illegal all over the world. Okay, so by underlining these words, it's going to help us to identify what information we need to find in the text. Now remember, the answers do come in order. So we're going to find the answer to number 27, and then 28, and then 29. They come in order in the passage. Okay, so the answer to number 27 is in this piece of text. Read it and see if you can find whether the answer is yes, no, or not given. Pause now and then continue. Okay, so the answer is here. Studies have shown that corporal punishment can result in immediate child obedience. Now, immediate child obedience. So the answer is yes, because obedience and compliance are synonyms. Number 28. It is difficult to compare the benefits and shortcomings of corporal punishment. Yes, no, not given. Read through the text and then we'll look through the answers together. Okay, the answer is here at the very bottom. Would you choose yes, no, or not given? If you haven't chosen yet, pause the video and choose. The answer is not given. So they say that um, the shortcomings outweigh the disadvantage, outweigh its advantages. However, it doesn't mention whether or not this was easy or difficult. The writer's opinion, um, it's impossible to know the writer's opinion from this piece of text. So the answer is not given. Number 29, read the text, find the answer, and then we'll have a look together. Right, in this case, the answer is here. While this behavior, which is considered an integral part of children's development process, should not be discouraged, it should not be allowed without consequences either. Okay, the answer must be no, because it should not be discouraged. 
Okay, on to number 30. Pause the video, read the text, choose yes, no, not given. We'll look through it together in a second. Right, the answer is here. Although these two terms are usually used interchangeably, so because the terms are used interchangeably, it means that people don't realize the difference between discipline and punishment. So the answer is yes. These, use, these terms are used interchangeably. Therefore, people don't know what the difference is between them. Number 31. Read the text. Choose yes, no, not given. Hit play. We'll look at the answers together. Okay, the answer is at the bottom here. Corporal punishment as one discipline technique might be physical or psychological. Rejection, separation from others, or deprivation of rights. Okay, so we're saying that it is, in fact, it is not um, part of what is considered as discipline. So it says, te the text mentions that corporal punishment is one discipline technique. So actually the answer is yes. Oh, sorry, the answer must be no, do you see? Because it's a double negative. It says, corporal punishment is not part of what is considered as discipline. And in the text, it shows that corporal punishment is discipline. So in this case, the answer is no. So it's a very tricky question there. And in fact, I actually had to reread that in order to see why the answer was no. Very, very slimy. Number 32, read the text, find the answer, and we'll go through it together. Okay, the answer is here. So supporters of corporal punishment claim that it can alleviate parents' anger. So the text says, they believe that corporal punishment can reinforce parental authority and then diffuse the tension between parent and child and reduce the parent's fury if the child's behavior is exasperating. So the answer is yes, because fury and anger are synonyms. So does corporal punishment alleviate parents' anger? Yes, it does, because it reduces the parent's fury. Number 33. So a smaller passage, see if you can find the answer. Hit pause, find the answer, then hit play. We'll go through it together. The answer is here. It is currently prohibited in several countries. Therefore, parents do not have the right to use it unless they dare to face charges. So it says it is currently prohibited in several countries, but that doesn't mean that it is illegal in all countries across the world because it is only illegal in several countries. So the answer must be no. Let's move on. Now at this point, you're probably getting a little bit tired and that's because kind of the reading test is a, is a test of stamina as well. You've got to really be paying attention for a long period of time and constantly um, finding a word or rereading passages of the text or working out why one thing is the answer and not the other, not the, not the other answer. So that's why it's so important to practice doing IELTS reading tests before you go to do your real reading test. So let's move on to 34 to 37. So this is a summary completion strategy. We're going to first read the instructions and that says we need to complete the summary below with only one word in each gap. Okay, next, think about what kind of word is needed in each of the spaces. And I'll let you take a second to do that. Thirdly, we need to locate the answer. So the answer is in one paragraph. And that is often the case. When we have a summary completion, often we'll find all of the answers in just one paragraph. So take a second, read through this paragraph and see if you can answer questions 34, 35, 36, and 37. Right, I hope you've pulled the video. I hope you've tried. If not, well, we're gonna do this together anyway. First of all, we have consequences. So 34 is consequences. 35, they fear that corporal punishment might deflect the something. Here we have shifts the blame. So deflects 
the and shifts the are synonyms. So the answer for 35 is blame. Number 36, we've got aggression. So um, children subjected to corporal punishment might think that it is acceptable to use aggression. And in the, in the text, we have another drawback of corporal punishment is that it can lead to a child seeing punishment as an endorsement of aggression. So endorsement, endorsement and something being acceptable are synonyms. Finally, number 37. If you haven't done it, just pause the video and try it yourself. It will make finding the answer just a little bit more satisfying. Now we know it comes in order, so we're expecting an answer at the bottom of the paragraph, and indeed we can find that here. We're talking about domestic violence in the text, and in the um, question it says domestic abuse. Right, now we've only got the last three questions, 38, 39, 40, and this is a match sentence ending strategy. So. Remember, there are more options than you need. So we've got, how many options do we have? We've got A, B, C, D, E, and F. So we've got six options and we only have three questions. So very cruel. We use three and we don't use three. The next thing I would recommend when you get this kind of question is to look on for the answer based on your understanding of the text. So by this point we've read the text a few times looking for the questions before and maybe we can um, get rid of some ideas just from our own knowledge of the text already. So verbal justification for punishment teaches children that hmm, misconduct will not be tolerated. Well yes it could teach that. Role models demonstrate the right behavior. Okay, probably not. They should take responsibility for their behavior. Certainly, it could be that. They should not rely solely on their parents. Okay, probably not that. Hmm, rules are entirely fair. So yes, that might be something that happens from verbal justification for punishment. They can be reasonable individuals. So okay, that doesn't make sense in this sentence. Now, so just by looking at um, what the answer could be, we've managed to get rid of certain options and that's going to make it slightly easier to answer this question. So you can do the same for the second. Try and do this by yourself. Pause the video and think which answers do you think it is unlikely to be? Okay, I think it's unlikely to be C and I also think it's unlikely to be D and I also think it's unlikely to be F. So we've got rid of three answers just by um, our understanding of the text. Finally, 40. Ultimately, children will behave well because... Okay, which options do you think it is unlikely to be? Well, I think it's unlikely to be B, unlikely to be C, and unlikely to be D as well. Oh, I think it's unlikely to be E. So in this case, it's probably going to be A or F. Now that doesn't necessarily mean it's definitely going to be A or F, but this technique does help you to just make it a little bit easier to answer the question. Now the final thing we're going to do is to locate the answer. So we've got our text and we can find the answer here in um, one of the final paragraphs. So see if you can find the answer for 38. Pause the video. Try and find the answer and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, I think the answer is here. Explaining to children why their misbehavior is not tolerated allows them to reflect on their improper behavior, improper behaviors and prepares them to be accountable for their actions. So the answer is C. Verbal justification for punishment teaches children that they should take responsibility for their behavior. It prepares them to be accountable for their actions. Number 39. Okay, read the text and see if you can find the answer. Then we'll look at it together. There is no need for children to accept that. Hmm. 
I think it's at the bottom of this passage. Okay, there is no need for children to accept that. E. Rules are entirely fair. A child does not need to agree that parental directives are justified. So justified and fair are synonyms. And finally, number 40. Take a second and see if you can find out the answer. I think the answer is here. Ultimately, children will behave well because B. Role models demonstrate the right behavior. They adopt a standard presented by their parents and other caregivers. So their parents and other caregivers are role models. Okay, so you'll probably agree with me that um, 38 to 40 were particularly difficult questions. Now, if you did get them right, well done. Now, the final thing we're going to look at is what kind of score you got and what band score that allocates to. So if you get 39 or even 40 right out of 40, you're going to get band 9. 37 to 38, band 8.5, an amazing score. 35 to 36 is band 8. Now, most of you are looking for band 7 or above. So in that case, you need to be getting 30 or above in your reading test. I would say that this was a particularly hard reading test. However, I think it's good to do hard reading tests before your real IELTS test so that you're overly prepared. Right, a good thing to do is to do more of these reading tests to make sure that you're ready for your real IELTS test. Best of luck and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye then.